Do you think that terrifying mutants are only in movies? Well, these kinds of monsters, sure, only in movies, for now. But somewhere on Earth, almost all of the nightmarish visions of a mad futurist dystopia have already come true. Giant mushrooms and plants. Trees that seem to come from another planet. Two-headed mutant animals something deadly and invisible threatens you at every step. This is the place where something terrible happened, something that changed the course of history and our view of science and technology. A place where someone or something disrupted the delicate balance between the forces of nature and human achievements. It happened 37 years ago. Humanity faced an event that had never happened before on the planet. And it wasn't done by some visitors from space, but by humans. Very quickly, it became known as the biggest man-made disaster in history. It happened on that fateful day, April 26, 1986. An accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. And there are reasons to believe that it's not over yet. Is anything happening there now? Many people would wonder and be surprised by the answer. But why? After all, the station hasn't been working for years and nothing can explode there anymore. But no one is talking about explosions. Things could be much worse. In this video, we'll take a journey into the bowels of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, explore the underground catacombs, and find out what other dangers this apocalyptic place can pose for humanity. What is happening there now? What lies under the Chernobyl sarcophagus? The footage from the incident site taken in the first days after the event spread all over the world, despite the USSR's Iron Curtain, couldn't hide what happened. Each picture is unsettling in its own way, but there is some very unique footage among these shots. At first, it's difficult to figure out what's happening in this photo. It looks as if a giant mushroom has grown from under the floor and ghostly figures and helmets seem to be working next to it. But there's something unexplicably creepy about this scene, isn't it? Your gut feeling is right. You see the largest accumulation of the most toxic man-made substance ever. Because of its shape, this formation was grimly dubbed Elephant's Foot. It has become the most gruesome symbol of Chernobyl, a silent symbol which makes it even more sinister. This substance has different names, nuclear lava, corium, Chernobylite. In the days and weeks after the Chernobyl accident, just walking into this room for a couple of minutes meant certain death. This photo was taken a decade later in 1996, but even then, the radiation left a typical grainy structure on the film. The person in this photo is Artur Korniev. Many experts consider him a human phenomenon. He visited this room more often than anyone else. Among all the survivors, he presumably received the highest dose of radiation in the world. Surprisingly, not only did he survive, but he is still alive and is already over 70. But what is this substance anyway? And how was it formed? This is where we find out that the most dangerous things happened at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant after the explosion. When radioactive smoke rose above the plant and was poisoning everything around, something no less dangerous was happening below. 
Specifically, the destroyed rods with nuclear fuel began to melt. However, they didn't cool down during melting, but continued to heat up. But why? Why heat up and not cool down? The fact is, processes occurring in radioactive metals led to some effects that laypeople may find unexpected. Nuclear fuel in the Chernobyl reactors was uranium pellets packed inside heat-generating elements. And although uranium is a metal, it's a very tricky one. Unlike a piece of white-hot iron that quickly begins to cool down when unheated, uranium has its own internal energy that comes from atomic nuclei decay. And some uranium isotopes have too much of this energy. In simple terms, if this energy is not constantly removed, uranium will begin to melt on its own. This is exactly what happened during the Chernobyl disaster. And after the explosion, all hell broke loose. The rest of the nuclear fuel continued to melt. At the same time, the temperatures were so high that everything nearby was absorbed by the melting lava including metal structures, glass, brick, and concrete. This hell of a mixture even got its own name, Chernobylite. Although this has happened before and not in Chernobyl. This substance has been formed outside of research labs at least five times in history. For the first time during the accident at the Three Mile Island reactor in Pennsylvania in 1979, the second time in Chernobyl, and as many as three times during the meltdown of the reactor in Fukushima in 2011. Before the Fukushima accident, only in Chernobyl was nuclear lava able to escape from the reactor. Without a cooling system, radioactive mass crawled through the power unit for a week after the accident. As it spread, it took in molten concrete, sand, the remains of graphite, which inhibited nuclear reactions, and in general, everything that it could reach. The lava spread through the steam distribution system until it reached the bubbler pool. This term denotes a special reservoir with cold water. In emergencies, excess steam is discharged there from the cooling system, which then condenses. It was only in December 1986 that researchers managed to go into the bubbler pool with an awfully high level of radiation. There, they saw this huge blurred mass with a gray, in some places black, shiny surface. Then it was given this gloomy name, elephant's foot. Measurements showed radiation of about 8,000 Roentgen per hour on the surface of a giant drop. A little further, we'll explain how unspeakably high that is. At first, the researchers decided that it consisted of molten lead. Because lead blocks were initially dropped from helicopters into the reactor zone following the accident, it was assumed that lead would partially reduce the heat and, when melted, would increase the heat exchange area. This was supposed to lower the power of the molten core. Sometime after the discovery, the researchers took great pains to collect several samples of the elephant's foot, approaching it for just a couple of seconds at a time. Laboratory tests showed that there was no lead in this formation. It contained about 10% of uranium, a full range of nuclear fuel radionuclides, a melt of silicon dioxide, and some other elements. But long before the discovery of the elephant's foot, the liquidators already knew what was happening and what threats it might pose. And the threat was even more severe than what had already happened. In May 1986, the liquidators discovered a source of ultra-high radiation. The Kyrzok 3 device was used when examining the premises, which measures the intensity of gamma fields. It was a powerful tool that could register values up to 3,000 Roentgen per hour. 
Just so you know, radiation of 600 to 1,000 Roentgen is considered the most dangerous and lethal dose for humans. So, the device, designed for 3,000 Roentgen, went off-scale and collapsed. According to one of the liquidators, research engineer Georgi Popkov, a toy horse on wheels was pushed into one of the suspicious premises where regular equipment went off scale. A sensor of an even more powerful dosimeter was attached to it. The device showed 14.5 thousand Roentgen per hour. Once again, let's put this into perspective. Radiation of 1,000 to 5,000 Roentgen immediately renders a person comatose and causes death in 5 to 35 minutes following the start of exposure. 8,000 or more Roentgen is a lethal dose of radiation incompatible with life, which kills a person in an instant. And here, it was almost 15,000. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. Experts were concerned that lava from the reactor core could melt its bottom, penetrate the soil, and infect aquifers. From groundwater, extremely radioactive substances would get into the Pripyat River, and from there into the Dnieper River, rendering an area of millions of square kilometers unsuitable for life. The entire water area of the Black Sea was in danger of becoming one giant exclusion zone the Interagency Committee decided to urgently implement an awfully complex engineering project to prevent corium from reaching the groundwater. Many years after the disaster, the witnesses began to uncover the details of those events. Vladimir Naumov is one of the liquidators and the current chairman of the Inter-Regional Council of the Chernobyl Union of Russia in the Central Federal District. He told the media something that has never been covered in the press. I was 30 then. I worked in one of the mines in the Tula region. As soon as the accident happened, they started to recruit miners to eliminate its consequences. We were given a serious and profound task very few people knew about. We were brought to the nuclear power plant 18 days after the reactor exploded. Once at the site, we immediately started the shift. We had the task of making a 150-meter tunnel underground, leading from the third power unit to the fourth one that exploded. And then, under the fourth unit, dig a chamber with dimensions of 30 by 30 by 30 meters. Special refrigerators had to be installed in this space. They were supposed to cool the substances formed as a result of the explosion. Three divisions carried out the task, two weeks each. The first group virtually made the tunnel. The second finished the tunnel and started digging the chamber. And the third one finished it and helped to mount the refrigerators. The installations have been there this whole time. There is a concrete sarcophagus above the reactor, and under it, there is a cooling chamber. So a massive concrete slab stuffed with pipes, refrigeration units, and other equipment was put under the reactor. This eliminated the risk of groundwater contamination. When the work was done, the 150-meter horizontal tunnel leading from the bottom of the fourth reactor was no longer needed and was also concreted. Mostly young 20 to 30 year old people worked on this Herculean task. They worked under the most difficult and dangerous conditions. Many of them didn't live long enough to celebrate their 40th birthday. And what about the elephant's foot? Is the story over or is it to be continued? Over the following years, it was being cooled and crushed but was never entirely neutralized. Even today, its remains are still several degrees warmer than the environment. The decay of radioactive elements continues, and although the double shelter structure over the Chernobyl nuclear power plant should prevent radiation from spreading by air, it probably won't provide complete safety. Some experts believe that the elephant's foot in the future may cause a new disaster, 
it is assumed that it continues to melt the concrete foundation underneath and can eventually pass through the concrete into the soil and from there reach the water layers. This reminds us of the so-called Chinese syndrome. In the late 1970s, people used to mock scientists who warned that the reactor core could melt through the reactor containment. People used to joke that if this happened in America, it would pass through the earth and come out somewhere in China. This sci-fi scenario even inspired director James Bridges to shoot a film with the same name, China Syndrome, in 1979. It got released a few weeks before the Three Mile Island accident. Life seems ironic, doesn't it? In the 1980s, this syndrome was forgotten, but revisited again in 2017 during yet another inspection of the Japanese Fukushima 1 plant that exploded in 2011. It turned out that the reactor core of the second power unit had melted and leaked out of the containment. History repeated itself. It looks like it's time for us to start thinking hard about what to do when our own achievements turn against us.